2021 with Kunurado Zuguego, Joe Dalro, New Jets, and welcome to this Wednesday edition of the Ganawage COVID-19 Task Force uh, updates. Today we have some uh, rather big news. We'll also be joined by Maris Jacobs from Planet Consulting about uh, one of the programs that is having some success in Ganawage and needs even more success. We we'll hope we hope to build on that. But first, we'd like to welcome from the Cattery Memorial Hospital Center the Executive Director. Lisa Westaway. Lisa. Good afternoon. Um, vaccination continues here in Gunawage at the Bingo Hall and is going very smoothly. Uh, again, we vaccinated uh, just under, or we are in the process of vaccinating a total of just under 300 people today, uh, which will bring us up to approximately 1,200 people in the community vaccinated up till now. I believe our uh, web um, <laughs> web scheduling, uh, online scheduling has been working all day. Uh, so, uh, and it's gone rather smoothly at the vaccination site. So a big thank you. If you haven't booked your appointment yet, please do so as quickly as possible. We're already in week two of the vaccination um, campaign. We don't have more than two weeks left, so it's important that you book your appointment as quickly as possible. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of information or answer some questions that we receive on a day-to-day -day basis here at the task force or, or at the hospital. Uh, so the first is to talk a little bit about uh, first and second doses of both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. I'm just going to speak about the two vaccines because those are the ones that we have in the community and we don't expect to have AstraZeneca or Johnson & Johnson in the community at this time. But if we ever do, then we'll talk a little bit more about those two vaccines at a later time time. So both Pfizer and Moderna are mRNA vaccines. Um, Pfizer, after uh, phase three trials of 40,000 people over 16 years of age, demonstrates 90%, 95% efficacy after two doses of, uh, so to prevent COVID, 95%. Um, and 14 days after the first dose, uh, efficacy rates are at 92.3%. Um, of course, uh, 14 days is the minimum to develop that efficacy after the first dose. However, what we're seeing is that elders have a slightly uh, longer wait before efficacy is um, developed at 92.3%. And we also know that these are in trials. So sometimes real life experiences gives us efficacy rates a little bit lower, but those are being analyzed now. For Moderna, after uh, so clinical trials of 30,000 individuals who were 18 and over, after two doses, efficacy rate is at 94.1% of preventing COVID, but 100% of preventing serious illness. Um, and again, um, after uh, first dose um, is a little bit lower. However, um, what we see, though, is efficacy rates are still quite high after first dose. So what the strategy is that Quebec has used is that they want, considering that high efficacy rate, their goal is to vaccinate the most amount of people possible in the top six priority sections. So the top six priorities of the ministry are the, prior, are the people that are most vulnerable to COVID and most at risk of serious illness or death. And therefore, their goal is to vaccinate as many of those people as possible with a first dose to give those vulnerable populations a high amount of uh, protection before they administer the second dose. Now, um, when we look at intervals between first and second doses, this information is being studied as we speak. Of course, the 21 and 28 days that we heard of early, early on in the vaccination campaign and from Pfizer and Moderna was um, based on the clinical trials and scientific data that they had at that time. However, um, studies continue and we do get more information and new information as we go along, which allows us to make changes to our protocols, our vaccination protocols. If you're interested in getting all of this information, it can be found on the, minist the MSSS uh, website, the ministry's website. And uh, more specifically, there is a document on that website, which is the, Im the Quebec Immunization Program document, which was updated today, March 10th. Um, that document exists on the 
website. We're in the process of having it translated. I wasn't able to find it in English. Uh, however, um, this information and updated information about vaccines, not just COVID-19 vaccines, but all of the vaccines that we administer on a regular basis, um, information is updated on that site. So you can look at that site if you're interested in getting the information. Um, so just to give you some, uh, a little bit of background about that. So intervals were 21 and 28 days. However, the Quebec immunization program has um, does recommend that a second dose be given. So everyone in Quebec at this time will receive a second dose. However, what they're recommending now based on existing trials, the Director of Public Health has accepted that uh, second doses be administered at 16 weeks. So that's approximately 112 days. Um, what they also state is that um, efficacy of the first dose does not decrease as you're moving towards that 112 day um, second dose administration. So you don't have to, you will not have to repeat vaccination of the first dose when you get your second dose and efficacy will not be erased or eliminated or decreased while waiting for that second dose. So in Quebec, as well as in Gunawage, because we are following Quebec standards and protocols, um, va vaccination of second dose will occur at 112 days. Now this information is very recent. It doesn't mean that it won't change over the course of time. That is the most updated information that we have as of today, uh, in fact, as of yesterday. So anybody who came into the vaccination site yesterday did receive a second, uh, an appointment for a second dose at 112 days. We received a few calls today because there are some people who did not receive a second appointment, especially those who were in last week. However, not to worry, everybody will receive an appointment and will be contacted or will be asking you to call us back as we get closer to that 16-week uh, mark. Um, but we do have a list of every single person who has received a vaccine, which vaccine you've received, the date you've received it, the lot that it came from within their vaccination. So there's there's some important information that the KMHC nurses keep track of that will allow us to be sure to book uh, your second dose. Um, I wanted to also talk a little bit about uh, some information that was in the news recently about an outbreak at Anna LaBerge Hospital and uh, we, we saw that in uh, the newspaper but we also received a lot of calls about that today. So yes, in fact, there was an outbreak at Anna LaBerge. It was on floor one west um, and um, that outbreak it no longer exists at the hospital so there is not a worry uh, or a stress to go to Anna LaBerge, every, uh, any uh, risk has been eliminated and the whole floor has been sanitized and I've spoken with connections uh, at Anna LaBerge a couple of times today, uh, especially with respect to medical transport and uh, the area is now safe and you are able to frequent Anna LaBerge. So I just, we wanted to give that information to keep the community updated. Um, I guess the most important information though that we wanted to give today was regarding a press release that came out about Dr. Gauthier and the fact that she has um, stepped down from her role as medical advisor to the task force. Um, this is for a very, very important reason. Uh, it's so that she can give all of her time and energy to her patients. As you all know, Dr. Gauthier has spent countless hours time, energy, emotion, heart, and all of, have, has given all of her spirit to the protection of the community during the COVID-19, um, during this, this threat. And, um, and in fact, she has been monumental in the response that the task force has uh, made uh, within the community. And we are especially grateful to the commitment and uh, the contribution that she has made to the community over the past year. But she wishes to continue that contribution to her patients, which she has been doing, but she's been sharing her time with many, many, many different um, people, task force, all of our community organizations, um, as well as her patients. And so we, uh, we're, she feels that it's time to uh, turn back to give 100% of her time and energy to her patients, both here at KMHC and at St. Mary's. And we support her in that decision, of course. And, and we're lucky that she 
is of course still a part of the community and still here with us. So really we just wanted to acknowledge her time, her effort, her, her commitment to the task force, to the COVID-19 response. We are very grateful and thankful and, um, and just uh, remind the community that her expertise will continue to be felt uh, in the coming years. So thank you, Dr. Gauthier. It, uh, we, we very much appreciate the time that you devoted to us. Thanks. Thank you very much, Lisa. And uh, I know we'll miss her on, the, on this program, but I'm, I'm sure at some point when things hopefully really slow down, we'll have her back and wrap things up because she, uh, she got some great responses on the programs that she did with us here on the COVID-19 task force updates. Joining us next to talk about the Indigenous uh, Community Business Fund is Maris Jacobs from Planet Consulting. They have been, been hard at work and uh, things have been going well. So we'll get her to do a little update for us right now. Maris. So hi everybody, um, I'm just here to give a brief update and reminder that applications for the Indigenous Community Business Fund are due on this coming Monday, March 15th at 4 p.m. Um, so as a reminder, the funds are being distributed uh, through Dawda Nuzakta through five new programs that have been developed. Um, and businesses are eligible to receive up to $10,000 or, or in a, another unique program up to 50% or $25,000 in an um, investment project that demonstrates complementary financing. So if you need any clarity on those things, you can definitely reach out to us and we're happy to help. Um, at this point, uh, I want to stress the importance of getting your applications in as early as possible. Um, they have been coming in, uh, we've been processing them, so thank you to everybody who's um, sent us their completed uh, documents so far. Um, they're being reviewed as they come in. Uh, so once we receive them, we look them over and if it's, everything's good, we send them on to Dawdini Zakta and the review committee to be um, um, looked over there. So uh, if you are in the process of, of applying and you are going to apply by the deadline and you've submitted already, you can expect to hear back um, by March 31st, so just in a couple of weeks at the end of the month. Um, like I said, if you are in the process of applying and you have um, concerns or you're unsure about something, if you're hesitant to apply for any reason, please, please give us a call. Um, that we are in the home stretch now, so I can help um, at all hours of the day, um, kind of, uh, until uh, March 15th. And I'm willing to help with any questions or guidance in the application process. Um, there's been some calls about technical difficulties, um, clarity about what is what you can apply for, um, and I'm I'm there to help with all those questions. So I just wanted to um, note some important things as reminders if you are submitting. Um, and those are to include your supporting documents. So um, those will include things like bills, receipts, um, estimates, depending on what you're requesting. So those are really um, a key part of your application. Um, we also encourage or ask that businesses submit financial statements if they have them. Um, we realize that not everybody has formal documents like that. Um, so if you're concerned about that or if you're unsure of what to do, give us a call and we can guide you through the process. Um, to date, uh, including some pending applications that are still under review, um, there's, we've received roughly 80,000 in applications, uh, which puts, put, puts us well under the 1 million um, that's available. So if you're thinking of applying, definitely do so and um, do it as early as possible. Um, like I said, if you're, as if you're hesitant or you, if you're in the middle of an application or very close to the end or if you haven't started one, um, give us a call and I can give you some ideas and help you through that process. Um, I'm also available on the weekend if you have any last minute things you want to clarify. Um, I just want to stress how important it is to, to to submit your applications and discuss what your needs are. So the basic three things you need to do, describe what your needs are, um, give an explanation of why they're needed, how they're gonna help your business, and then again, provide those supporting documents. Um, so there's a lot of text out there, there's a lot of um, descriptions on the website, um, but we're here to make it a little bit easier for you to apply. So again, the information is available on dewa.ca. Um, you can access the application there, or you can give us a call or email us um, for the application. We also have some paper copies available at the post office, um, and I'm actually on my way to deliver some after this um, 
to various businesses. So um, if you're thinking about applying or if you have any questions, please, please give us a call. This is um, the last stretch before the deadline. So uh, any missing documents or concerns can be, um, you can send your questions to uh, info at planetgunawaga.ca or you can reach me at 514-971-8077. Nyawa. Nyawa Maris, and don't call at 3 a.m. even though she said almost any time. Give her a break, she's working really hard. Uh, we shall be back tomorrow, by the way, with uh, a regular update. Uh, there's always news here in Gahnawagi regarding COVID-19. And um, before we leave, we're going to uh, be having, uh, showing another one of the testimonials that we've been running over the past few days. Um, they're pretty good. You'll enjoy the next one. Uh, before I leave, though, I just wanted to mention that uh, in the news today, CBC ran a story uh, that we thought we should mention. There were 18 new deaths from the virus reported in First Nations communities. And uh, it goes to show again that we continue to do a pretty amazing job here in Gahnawaga as a community uh, preventing uh, hospitalizations and deaths and serious repercussions from this. So that's just hats off to everybody here. Um, also, the Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, acknowledged Myrtle Bush, who, uh, as we know, received her shot when the, she was the first one to uh, receive a shot when the um, vaccination center opened last Thursday. So anyway, congratulations to her. And uh, again, if you want to make a reservation, you can do, throw, uh, do so through the website, or you can also call 638-3930, extensions 2295 or 2206, and there is transportation uh, available. They can put you uh, in touch with the right people there. And with that, David Lahash will be taking you through these uh, next few programs. I'll be taking a little time off. Uh, take care, everyone. And we'll see you uh, next time. And again, we'll leave you with one of our testimonials. So on behalf of everyone here, Nyao Koa Nano, Onigiwahi. So I'm here in Candiac getting the first shot of the Pfizer vaccine. Long time waiting. And I have uh, Nurse Brigitte. She is uh, administering the vaccine today. Um, Everybody seems to be in good spirits, and I'm quite excited. Big breath. There you go. And it's that simple. I have my first dose of the vaccine, and I'm doing it for my community and my family to keep them safe. shot of the poison.